Hey everyone, Tom here. A few weeks ago, we posted a poll on our Instagram account, asking you guys if you'd like it if we started doing reviews of parks and coasters we had visited over the past couple of years. The response to it was bigger than we could anticipate. Then we asked if you'd like us to review it in Dutch or in English. Again, here, there was a clear winner. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you our first roller coaster review. <laughs> for our first coaster review, we pick the one that started everything for us. The coaster that launched us into being an enthusiast. You already saw it in the title, of course. It is Anubis the Ride in Plopsaland de Palla. Anubis is a lounge coaster built by Gerslauer and opened in 2009 in Plopsaland de Palla. It was the park's first real thrill ride. So, what do we think about it? Well, we're going to do the review based on three categories. The layout, the theme and the overall experience. Keep in mind that this review is based on our own opinion and having a different opinion is what is amazing about being an enthusiast because everyone has a different opinion and likes different things. With that out of the way, let us start with the layout. According to RCDB, Anubis has a 600 meter long layout with a top speed of 90 km per hour and has its highest point at 34 meters. When the coaster starts, you make a small drop out of the station and go into what we think is the best part of this coaster, the launch. People, I'm telling you, this coaster has by far the best launch we have experienced up to date. So for us, this launch is better than the second launch of Taran or the launch of Flug from Novgorod. It is so short and snappy and it really takes your breath away. You do have a small running start, just like most Gerslauers do, but the short amount of time and space that it needs to get you to that 90 km per hour is just insane. And now I hear you say, Tom, the launch of Novgorod is far more forceful than Anubis. It's been calculated. Well, I'm here to say you, no, not really. It's not really calculated that way, since it counts from 0 to 100 when they do the calculation. But it doesn't really do 0 to 100 because, just like Anubis, it also has that running start. And in fact, when we rode Fluke, we really didn't have the same breathtaking feeling that we always have on Anubis. So when you exit this amazing launch, you go up to the top pad, which is at the highest point of this ride, at 34 meters. Depending on the weather and the time of day, you can get some really great airtime on this point. Most days you get some really good floater, but uh, we did already have many rides where you get some really good ejector as well. But that was usually during evenings, during summer, when the train was really warmed up. So after the top hat you get your first real drop. That then brings you to the first inverting element, the dive loop. Following it, it has a small kind of top hat, which is in our part the strangest element on this ride. After that strange element, you get that second inversion, which is also the inversion with the most pictures taken of it, the Immelman. Now the combination of these three elements is what Gerslauer calls a cow hitch. Strange, but well, it's a cool looking element. Going out of the Immelman, you'll make a turn and then you go up to the mid-course break run. Now, depending on the time of day, this can be a pretty hard break. Uh, it loses some momentum and you can get slammed into those restraints. Now after the mid-course brake run, you have a small drop with a hill and then you go into a helix, which then brings you into the final inversion, which is also our second best or second favorite element of this ride, the hardline roll. This hardline roll has some amazing hang time and it is, yeah, one of the favorite elements of most enthusiasts that ride it. After the hardline roll, you're in the end and you go into the final break run. This layout might be on the shorter end, but it really packs a punch. Starting with a bang and ending with a bang. Now let's talk about the theme. The ride is themed around a TV show 
that first aired on Nickelodeon. Het Huis Anubis is what it's called. Here, a bunch of students uh, look into the mysteries that surround this house that they are staying in. The station building of this ride is a scaled replica of the actual house that they used for the show. Inside the station and queue line, you have a lot of scenes from the show, including some furniture, the bureau of the caretaker, and some of the hidden rooms in the house. The finishing of the station is very well done, with all kinds of little details, like the Anubis symbols, references to specific episodes, and even a statue from one of the films. Also, the train has been themed to Anubis, with a beautiful Egyptian-style car, and of course, right in front of the train, an Eye of Anubis symbol. Outside of the station building, there is just a little bit of theming around the launch track, with a beautiful arch over the launch. Aside of that, only some fences around the right are as well themed to the spooky atmosphere. The station and the right square also feature some of the songs of the show, which also enhance the theme. Last but not least, let's talk about the overall experience. Overall, this ride is just great. The queue gets you in the atmosphere, building up the tension. The ride itself has a really big start and a really big finish. Everything in between is just a great bonus. For us, the best part still remains the launch. It is just crazy fast, the acceleration is amazing. Now, this coaster isn't all happiness and praise, of course. It does show its age. And besides, it is a Gerslauer. It can get rough from time to time. Sometimes it really depends on which train you ride it. We've had days that one train would have loads of rattle and other trains that make it feel like a brand new ride. This ride really depends on the maintenance and the tech team. So if anyone of Plopsa is watching this video, please keep those wheels fresh. It really makes such a difference. It's a great ride when there is a fresh set of wheels on there and the train is well maintained. Another thing that takes away from the experience is that it has the, all the over-the-shoulder restraints from Gerslauer. We have been blessed with all the new infinity coasters that Gerslau has been putting up, that we have these new trains which give us a really free feeling, but these trains have a more restrictive and are completely the opposite of the infinity coasters, to be honest. Add to that, when you're in the front row, it's really hard to bring your arms up because you're in this V-shaped, podium-style shaped train, which will block uh, your arms uh, as you will touch the other person's arms and you're really twisted and stuck. However, with everything taken into account, this is still our favorite ride in Belgium. Even with the newer additions from Gerslauer being built, this is still our favorite ride here in Belgium. Now, if you want to give one tip to get the best ride experience, we suggest sitting in the front row on the left seat. It has just that extra whip when going into the top hat. It's just amazing. Now, if we need to grade this ride, we would give it a A minus. It is an awesome ride, but it does show its age. However, nothing can beat the launch this coaster has. And if you get inside the right train, you will have a great time. Thank you for watching our first ever review. If you made it this far in the video, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to let us know what you think of this review. And if there is a coaster that you would like us to review in the future, then post it down here in the comments. If you want to see more of our content, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we upload a new video. That's all for now. See you in the next video. Bye! The response to it was bigger than we an the response to it was bigger than we could anticipate.